wanted my kids to experience what I did growing up, to learn how to work, to learn how to think, to learn how to be independent in your own man, and to develop a love of animals and nature. We're in the Black Hills of South Dakota, currently in Custer County, just a few miles outside of the city limits of Custer, where my family has been on this place since roughly about uh, the late 40s. We make a living raising cattle right here on this ground on the Forest Service and our private ground. My folks bought this place in 1946 for $11,000, by the way. This place has been several different things. My dad told, chose to dairy, they milked 35 cows. My dad had some tough luck in the 50s to be able to run that size of a dairy at that time. We had a, a pretty long dry spell. The Forest Service pulled my dad's day use permit and he couldn't keep as much livestock. 1978, we had the opportunity to buy the term permit. And that's when my wife and I and my dad and mother got into the beef cows more as a full-time deal. And, and of course, my kids were little and it just growed from there. Me and my sisters and family grew up put, raising cattle out on the back permit here on the home place. Our job every day was to go out and, and a couple times a week checking on cattle and moving our pastures. We used to just kick everything out in the summer and we'd go catch them in the fall and bring them in wean calves. And then roughly in the 90s, we had to downsize our operation a little bit with the uh, expansion of the uh, Peter Norbeck Wilderness. We took in some of our grazing allotment boundaries and we lost some numbers and uh, the National Forest Service gave us uh, some extra numbers on another unit up north. Currently, me and my wife and my kids, we are running about 150 mama cows on our private ground and on the Forest Service uh, pastures. And, uh, and then we're helping dad out on his operation also, where he's running roughly about 90 head on the forest between uh, the forest in the summertime and private ground here in Custer County and Bennett County in the winter. We have uh, uh, 47 active grazing allotments uh, across the Ranger District and the Hell Canyon Ranger District is located on the southern end of the Black Hills National Forest. So we work with approximately somewhere between 80 to 90 ranching families and uh, they graze somewhere around uh, just under 10,000 head of, of cattle, uh, typically between the summer months from June to October. Within those allotments, we've got uh, various types of permits, grazing permits, of course, that we deal with. Most common is your direct permit or your term grazing permit, uh, where there's just a solid block of National Forest System land that the rancher grazes his livestock on during those summer months. And then we've got the term private land permits where, uh, especially here in the Black Hills, you'll see a, an intermingling of private land intermixed with Forest Service land. And so those are the type of permits we issue where maybe the, that private land piece will also be grazed in conjunction with the forest. The United States Forest Service is set up under the Department of Agriculture. One of the products, agricultural products, that the forest provides is forage. Uh, so one of the many uses of the national forest is livestock grazing. The elk and ungulates, they'll go after that fresh regrowth because that's the most nutritious. And so what we're doing with the cattle is keeping forage fresh in the meadows and, and keeping it from getting stagnant, and that's been a benefit to, to all grazing ungulates on the forest. We uh, do our best uh, as Forest Service personnel to get out to every place 
that we can during the summer, but obviously with that much country to cover, we can't get everywhere. So it's just invaluable to have great grazing permittees like, like uh, Tim and Clayton that know the area, know how their cattle utilize the area, and know what can be done to better improve grazing management on the national forest. When the Myrtle Fire burn us out in Pringle on another unit in, we think it's roughly the year of 2015, we combined our units and... Uh, we pulled our cattle out of there. Essentially, two of those pastures burned up. And we had to get them out of there anyway because of the fire at which raged on for several days. So we hauled them home. We didn't have anywhere else to go. With that, it had a large number of, uh, amount of fence that was burned up along the highway. And so it was at that time where Tim came to us with the, the thought process of running the cattle together in one herd uh, to give us, allow us time to get that, uh, the fence put back up uh, down there along the highway. Thought that was a, an outstanding idea because then it uh, again allows us to better manage the, the amount of time that's, that we rotate through these grazing pastures. But what we really saw then was the change in the grass by running the way bigger numbers. And initially it showed up on this pasture too. And by the rotation, it, it so improved the, the grass, it's just pretty remarkable. It's starting to see a vast improvement in your, both your covering composition of your native species within your riparian areas as well as your uplands. So it's been, uh, it's been very good to see. It's been uh, looking through the long-term monitoring, comparing past years to this year, you can really see vast improvement in resource conditions. This place hasn't changed much in 70 years. It's provided an experience that none of us will ever forget. If we don't take care of what Mother Nature has provided, I don't know, it might be the end of man. <laughs>